So one of the goals that we need to go toward now is MVP, minimum viable product. Uh, when is our project viable enough um, that it can start to be published? Because it's very common to release apps that are in version 1.0 and then add a few more uh, updates here and there, version 1.1, 1.2. I also see a lot that version 0 0.7 is released. So those numbers are very arbitrary, but they're sort of good to think about them in terms of completeness. 1.0, you should you could sort of think about it as 100% complete. But not really, because you could always improve upon it, uh, re, uh, optimize your code, think of different ways to do it, bit fix bugs, and all of that. So um, a while ago, maybe just for fun, um, uh, let's uh, take a quick look at our config XML file. Remember inside of our config XML file is where we've got a version number for our project uh, under common. So under common config XML file, we've got one dot one dot and then the, then the last date that we updated that at. Now it's not wrong if I were to publish it uh, with this version number because these version numbers are arbitrary. So that's something to think about when you publish your app. And we'll cover it again on our final pre-flight check before we really publish it. Uh, but here's a, a way to keep track of what version of the app uh, we're working with. And uh, we'll come back to this screen. But I just wanted to remember, so uh, March 8th was the last time we were um, uh, working with the config file. Well, we went back to it when we added the plugins, but we hadn't really worked with the config file in a while. You don't have to make any changes. I'm just checking that for my information. We're going to get back to the last thing that we were doing uh, last time, which was some styling. Because our, our project, as I said, uh, regarding MVP, minimum viable product, it's close enough to be done. It's got the main functionality, saving data, retrieving data, editing data, deleting data. Uh, those are the main. Uh, concepts I wanted to add to the app. Uh, we've also got the ability to take photos and scan barcodes and such. And we can add plenty of other things like a uh, real-time map that displays local sh uh, local comic shops or something. So there's still many things we could add to it. Um, but we have to decide at a point, when is it finished enough to start releasing it? And uh, we'll be doing that very, very soon, probably even even today. We have to set up our developer account at the app stores, and that's not too complicated. And then we'll be very close to actually start thinking about publishing. So um, I've got my app. I've got three entries so far. The last thing we were doing was uh, going to style the table. So let's get back to our CSS file. Open the index.css file. In the index.css file, at the end, the last thing that we did uh, was started to style the table. So here, our CSS selector is saying, find a div with an ID of this attached to it, and then find a table inside of it. So a table in this named div, background color, whatever color you want. I went with Alice Blue, and a width of 100% so it stretches out across the screen. You saw how that looked a moment ago when I ran it. Uh, let's style it a little bit more. Uh, the edges, for example, I don't see any edges to my table. So we can easily add a border. Now the syntax of adding borders is basically um, the um, the size of the border, what style of border, what color of border. So we can say 5 pixel. We have these different built-in styles. Say dashed line, dotted line, a double line, etc. We'll keep it simple. We'll say solid. And then color of the of that edge. Again, keeping it simple, we can say black. So it's going to be a five pixel border around the table, around the whole table. 
uh, its solid style and it's black. We can style each individual cell as well. Question? What if we decide that we don't want a border? Do we have to look at that? No, this is part of the styling that you can decide later on uh, whatever colors you want or styles okay. you want. So uh, here we'll start off with that. Um, I want to um, uh, make sure that we center the table on the screen so we'll use this trick margin auto. Uh, so normally margins in a document are all around the, the edge of the document, right? So if you're writing a paper in Microsoft Word, oftentimes you have one inch margins all around. So on all four sides of the page in Word, we have one inch. We can do that with margin as well to um, give, us, give ourselves some space on the various sides of the, uh, of the element. With margin auto, that often serves to uh, center the element because it puts an automatic amount of space on all four sides of the element and in, uh, in effect centering it. So the table will be centered here. This is more obvious if we had something like 50% width. Right now our table goes all the way to the edge so you don't really see the centering in action. Anything less than 100%, well normally then the table would not go all the way to the edge. Margin auto then centers the table no matter the size. If you want to see it, you can put something like 75%. I'm going to keep it at 100 eventually, but just to see it, I'll put it at 75%. Uh, let's add the property of uh, word wrap break dash word. So word wrap, that's what that is. That's a little obvious. It's uh, when a word gets to the end of the line, it'll wrap. The word will break to the next line. And the default, this is something uh, what we need to do at times regarding, regarding um, defaults. We're using jQuery Mobile as our interface. And jQuery Mobile, in many instances, has a drop shadow on some examples of text. Uh, it has uh, like a one pixel drop shadow. I want to negate or turn off the default. And in this case, we'll say drop shadow of none. So some notes here. Let's say we'll do notes this way, on the same line. Um, simple black border, 5 pixels thick. Automatic amount of space around element centers it. Word wrap. Uh, when a word is too long, have it break the word. Now, this is when you've got um, the, uh, a long name um, of the comic, it may go off the edge of the table. So, by breaking the word, word wrap happens, the word will get broken to the next line so that it doesn't go off the edge of the table. And then in this case, text shadow none is negate the built-in jQuery mobile text drop shadow. So the CSS rule that we created right here is affecting this certain table in this certain 
div. Um, and it's the whole table. And table is made out of rows and columns and cells and all of that. So we can then uh, target the other elements of the table to style it. So we'll further say here, next line, again, there's a div uh, with an ID of div show comics table. There's a table we're talking about. There are table headings in that table. If we had simply said th, we're saying any table headings in any table throughout the whole app will be styled as follows. But by being specific here, a table heading in a table in this certain div, style it, so forth, um, we, we get specific. So what we'll do here is, again, this is the part where you're going to choose your own colors that you like. But I'll go with background color again. Uh, I've got here uh, Rebecca Purple as the background color. Color of text. I'll do aquamarine. So color property effects text color. So when they were inventing CSS in 1996 or so, no one had the great idea to call it the property text color. Uh, they thought of, okay, we'll, we'll say background color means the, the color and the background of the element. Great. But no one had the idea to say, how about we call it text color? to mean the color of the text. It is simply color. When you first start off in web design and such and uh, learn about CSS, color is not obvious that it means text color. It should have call called it text-color, but it's just color. I'm sure there's an interesting story uh, of why that was specified that way, but you just have to memorize. Color means text color. Go ahead and save it and run it. Uh, then I'll sh uh, actually save it and run it in the in the simulator before the the device, just to show you, just to show you something a little faster. Uh, in terms of I don't know what colors to pick, um, I want to run it in the simulator. Now, if you already went to the device, you can always go to build uh, cancel or debug cancel. After you do a, if you do a run here and it's taking a while, you can go to debug. Where do they have it at? Build cancel. So, just run it in the simulator for a moment. Here's what I've got so far. So, background color Alice blue, five pixel solid black border. Then inside of the first row, these are all headings, THs. I have Rebecca Purple and Aquamarine. The reason I wanted to show it in the web browser is we're going to start to use the, um, the debugging tool as a, as a quick way to do some edits or some testing for CSS. Now I gave you some semi-random colors to, to pick here, but you probably want your own colors. But it would be good to uh, test out uh, some colors uh, before trying to type them, then saving it and running it. These developer tools here allow us to play with that. We've been in the console view to check JavaScript output. Let's go to the Elements view. Elements view will show you all of the HTML elements and the corresponding CSS. So the way we would use this, often the easiest way is in the, in the Elements view here, you activate the Select an Element in the Page to Inspect It icon, this little uh, pointer. Turn that on, it becomes blue. 
And then what you do is you hover over an element. It will pop up to tell you, in my case, you're hovering over a TH. And I hover over here. This is a TD up at the very top. That's a heading 1 with a class, because there's a dot of UI-title. So it tells you what element, what HTML code was there to, to create it, yes. But when you click on it, it then also shows you the various styles in play. So from top to bottom here, this is the code that I wrote, which then um, inherited other code here that was built in, plus other code, plus other code. So this is the, the cascade in CSS. It's actually upside down. Because, you know, cascade top to bottom, this is actually sort of like bottom to top. From here, this is the most um, specific bit of code of CSS. And as you scroll down here, it's the most general. As you go back there, it goes to the higher levels all the way up to HTML. HTML has built in a variety of styles. The browser has a variety of styles built in. In my case, these are crossed out because deeper in the code, things over overrode it. Over. Yes, from theme roller. Uh, most likely theme roller uh, overrid overrode most of these. Uh, so that's why we don't have this particular uh, font size anymore. Or maybe jQuery Mobile also did it. jQuery Mobile has its own styles, theme roller, and such. So the point of this is, OK, here's a quick way for me to figure out better color combinations. I selected that TH. And it also tells me here, ultimately, you've selected a TH, which is in a TR, which was in T-body which was in table, which was in a div with an ID, which was in an article, which was in an element with an ID of PG View Comics, which was in the body, which was in the whole HTML document. So this inspector is really good for understanding CSS. And CSS is useful for our style and design, right? I need to change the height of this, the size of this font, the color of this element. Well, the complexity of CSS is that it's nested. I can see here when I selected that number cell right here. This is a TH, which is inside of a row, which is inside of a table, etc. It's the same thing you see here, from specific to general. The specific element they clicked on inside of this, inside of this, ultimately inside of the HTML document. And here it's sort of the opposite, specific down to general. OK, so I'm trying to figure out colors. You can click, you can, um, you can make changes, you can uh, play around with what is there to figure out how to uh, style it. So from here I can um, play around and say, well, what if it looked, what if it was red? What if my colors my text color was different. So what you could do here is there's sort of like a scratch pad right here where you can write valid CSS. Um, this uh, CSS, I can style this particular element that I've selected. And within these curly braces, I can click and add any property, like color. And it pops up to suggest. Uh, what you might mean. So I mean color, colon, and then all this variety of named colors, fuchsia, chocolate. So I could be testing in here before I go back to Visual Studio. Question? Yeah, I'm thinking we use the, uh, the TH. Sorry, 
it it would uh, yeah the th as a selector back in visual studio right here right yes but in our particular case where this specific in our particular case we've only got one table in the whole project so using th would work fine but if we've got a project where we have multiple tables and multiple screens, then we do want to be more specific. So it, it may be easier, less typing and such. Yeah, simply th should give the same result. But I'm just showing here that if we need to target a specific th in a specific table, we need to be more specific. So here in this... Um, in this inspector, we can we can use it to do a little bit of experimenting. Oh, there's all of these colors of pink, pink, deep pink, hot pink, light pink. Then, of course, we can also write our own uh, RGB colors here. So, if you know RGB. Let's say 222199. Or if you know the hex numbers, uh, I don't. So F133, uh, and B2. You double click where? Oh, onto the color swatch. Single there. click. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's useful. It didn't look this nice before. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's cool. You get this uh, pop-up color palette. You can pick your perfect uh, colors, and it tells you the hex value right there, or RGB value, even HSL value. Say that again. Yeah, transparency. You can do transparency as well. So here in RGBA format, which would be here, RGBA 35, 121, 76 comma, uh, transparency level 44%. Then I have that color and it's transparent here. So it's mixing the original green with the Alice blue behind it because it's transparent. We're actually going to do something like that in a moment uh, to deal with zebra striping. So this, um, oh, and then you can also hover over things, I guess, to pick up a color. That's fun. So you can pick up a color off of the design, and then, oh, look at that. So I'm looking at the letter M deep down, and it's full of these different colors. This is all a... Uh, a playground. None of this is being saved to the original code. So I need to make a note of it uh, and then apply it back in Visual Studio. So if I ended up liking what that was, it doesn't apply it because if I refresh here or turn off the um, simulator, it's gone. And you can do a version of that in the device. Remember, if you simulate on a device, if your device is compatible, you can then also debug it in uh, 
in Chrome if your device is compatible. But if you go directly to the simulator, you have that F12 uh, console there to, to do some, uh, some work. And it's pretty interesting because uh, I'm going to attempt it right here. I'm going to load up my app, then I'm going to debug it, and I'll be able to change colors on my screen, and they also then change on the device. So here I am looking at my device, <clears throat> and I get the same thing in terms of Element Inspector. I can also control it here, View Comics. I uh, haven't saved any comics yet, so I'll save something. So I've got something there on the device. And the same thing here. I can use the selector there to go to a particular element, uh, th, uh, and then uh, change the styling. So then that changes on my device. Oh, and then also, if you notice, the table is centered. That's when we, I had it on 75% width of the screen and then margin auto so that the table is centered on screen. And so it changes on the device. Now this is again all temporary as soon as I uh, stop the, uh, the connection and, uh, and go back to Visual Studio this, this code never changed. So you'll want to pick colors that you like for some of these elements, where there is a color, where there is a border and such. You'll want to pick your own colors eventually. Let's continue styling this table. Uh, you see that when you have more than one row of comics, it becomes a little hard to see, um, differentiate one row between another. So let's deal with what we would call zebra striping. Let's make a note here. Zebra striping is coloring a table in alternate colors for readability. Coloring a table's rows for readability. Just like a, a zebra, classically, uh, black and white stripes, alternating stripes, uh, we can do that here with our table. So uh, with an interesting selector here in CSS. So again, there's a div with an ID of div comic show table. Inside of that div is a table. Inside of the table is a table row. just to pick any color, deep pink. Um, this would target or select all rows in this particular table in this particular div. What I want is, for example, the even numbered rows to be a certain color and the odd numbered rows to be another color. So alternating even, odd, even, odd, we can do that with some CSS. We can target the even-numbered rows to be styled a certain way, and the odd numbers 
another way. So here on TR, we're then going to say colon nth dash of dash type. The nth of type pseudo class notation represents an element that has an b minus 1 siblings with the same expanded element name before it, uh, blah, blah, blah. Very technical. Here is what will allow us uh, a certain type of row. Parentheses, we select even. So it will know the even numbered rows of your table, no matter how many there are. This selector will find you know, a row of type even in this table, in this div. And then we can style it however we want. Here I'm going to say background color deep pink. Uh, let's copy that whole rule and this time change it. How do you think we'll change it? Odd. So now we've got, let's select all the odd types of table rows, make them another color. I think this is going to be very, not very eye-pleasing. I didn't really pick any meaningful colors. I just, I'm just putting colors. I'll show you a trick in a moment to make it a little bit more eye-pleasing. Uh, but go ahead and try this out. Save it and run it and see, see the result. Now be careful here, there's no space between table row, tag, and the pseudo element. No space there. This is saying, we're talking about the even types of this. So no space. When you put a space, it doesn't mean the same thing. And putting a space basically is this thing is inside of this thing is inside of this thing, basically, with spaces. No space means it's attached. Just like up here, there's no space here. If you had a space, it might not exactly work how you expect. There's a div that has this ID attached to it, so no space. There is a row that has this even, uh, this even row, so it's attached, no space. Checking it in the simulator to also show you. We're achieving zebra striping in that we're doing odds and even colors alternating. Now, picking the right colors and all of that, that's a, that's a different issue. That, need, uh, that goes with, a, uh, with an eye for style. Let's see what it is. View, comic, there it is. So it looks pretty terrible. But again, you're going to pick your perfect colors. Uh, but we've got the first row which is odd, one is an odd number, and we've got the second one, even number, then odd, then even. So if I had one more comic, it would be the next odd one. So deep pink was were the odd, uh, were the even rows, and then dodger blue were the, were the odd ones. So if I save another comic, it'll create an odd row. view that result. I've got a brand new row, even odds. This is when you see my text color now doesn't look very good upon that background color. So I, we had just done background colors, obviously with color or text color, we can then make the contrast. And one of, the, one of the little things to know regarding graphic design, regarding choosing proper colors and such, is uh, readability and contrast. The default colors of jQuery Mobile were very boring, black and gray, 
but those are very readable combinations. You know, oftentimes we have papers printed out, black ink on a white background, because that's contrasty. I can read that. Imagine if this uh, document here were printed black ink on a gray background. It would be harder to read, not enough contrast. In my case, um, this dark text color on this relatively dark background is getting harder to read. Dark text color on a relatively light background, harder to read. Light color on a dark background, even though the colors look, uh, look weird, or maybe not the best colors, the contrast is good. This is a light color on a dark background. So the opposite, foreground and background, light versus dark, foreground versus background, can help create readability. Now here's a trick to, uh, to help with that readability. Uh, we'd chosen right here a, um, a, a value, but instead of um, using one of these predefined colors, and there's only about 114 of them, uh, we can set, create color formulas. One way is through RGB. So let's say we're going to select color 0, 50, 200. That's going to be a color, a certain color. I'm going to write the same color, this time RGBA. Same color, but RGBA 50, 200, comma, and then a percentage such as 0 0.5. So there's this color, whatever it is, uh, it's going to be some shade of blue. It's heavier blue. No red, a uh, little bit of green, a lot more blue, RGB. Here, RGBA, don't forget the A right there, A for alpha. Then we've got a fourth value, transparency. So it's the same color as before, but now 50% transparent. It's a variation of the first color. So if we latch onto a nice color that looks nice and readable up here, we can just then make it transparent a bit uh, to uh, create a complementary color, a color that goes well with it. Also, however, thinking in terms about the background behind everything, which, uh, remember, is going to be up here. Uh, the whole table has Alice Blue, so that Alice Blue color is going to mix with whatever blue that is, because it's 50% visible. So I'm going to run that just to see what it looks like. So the uh, even ones are a darker blue, the uh, odd ones are a lighter blue. Uh, I'm probably going to go back and change the color of all of the text to white. I like the colors that they are um, related, but then the color of the text is hard to read. So that's an easy fix. You go back to each of these and say, okay, text color, probably something easy like white. We have other whites as well, antique white, floral white, ghost white, etc. So this will be another example where you will pick your perfect colors. You don't have to use these that I used.
also right there with the same backgrounds and now a white foreground color that's a lot more readable. And that again is about the contrasts, foreground versus background, and very easy to do uh, light versus dark, dark versus light, foreground and background. Any questions on that? Editing the or styling the table? It's not obvious on mine, but when I go to some of these pop-ups, let me come back here. Um, you might you might notice this best if you're if you're running this on your app on your device. If you're running your app with the uh, with your styling from theme roller this will be more obvious but have, have you noticed uh, I think a couple of people have mentioned it that when you go over to your options uh, screen you chose your colors but your options screen looks weird it looks maybe transparent so the background color of this screen bleeds into here we can fix that with some CSS. So I'll show you how to fix it, and then I'll show you how you would have figured out to fix it. Let's go back to the CSS. jQuery Mobile is using certain classes to um, define the look of your colors and such. So there is one called dot .ui dash dialog dash contain greater than symbol this is a child dot ui dash content so we'll say here jQuery mobile classes that define the jQuery mobile classes that define the the element of a dialog box background. And I'll show you how you, we would have found that in, in just a moment. But this is going to be the code. There is something that has a class, which is a child of something that has this class. So something directly as a child of something else. And all of that comes from using jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile, as we've been using it, it's a, it's a framework. Um, it's, it's a template to create interfaces. And therefore, it's, it's defined that it has these um, uh, these structures by using the uh, by reading the documentation or using the developer tool as I'll show you in a moment we can reverse engineer we can figure out uh, what element what code do I need to edit to target a certain element so just to make it obvious you'll pick a better color background color gold this will this will fill in the background color that's been missing for your design if you're using your own colors and you make dialogues appear and the dialog looks transparent well you'll need to target the UI content uh, which is a child of dialog contain and then set a background color so go ahead and save it and run it you can see this result uh, when you open the options screen of the app.
So when I load my app and go to the options screen, there's the color. Now gold probably is not the color that fits best on your app. You've got your own color scheme. So you need to uh, refer back to what is the color that you wanted in your design and then plug it into that screen. So it pop, it shows up right here. Yes? Do you need to load back all these colors to use into a team no, you don't. Well, you don't have to regenerate it to make this change. But uh, what do you mean? Put it back. To uh, I would override it right here because uh, it sort of seems like to me like it's a bug. That Jake, that the uh, that the theme roller CSS style doesn't address styling that pop up, so I've found just fix that with this one line there, and then the rest of your jQuery mobile theme roller CSS file is fine. That seems to be, theme roller seems to be overriding, except for that table that we did. But even the font, I mean, color, I had to change. The problem might be the order of where you've got your CSS in the HTML file. Mm -hmm. uh, just to confirm, you, you see here, I've got the um, I've got well, I, I don't. I, I'm using. I'm not using a, a theme roller theme, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have the note here. Your custom theme roller go, goes here. So your theme roller colors should go first and then this custom CSS. So if you've got them backwards, that's what's going to happen, that you think you're setting a color in the index CSS and then theme roller's overriding it. Of course it is, because then in the order of things, we have to have it first the theme roller style sheet, load all of that up, and then load and apply this custom code we're doing right now. So it should be in this order. Theme roller style, and then this index CSS file. Okay, so what I was about to show was, uh, if you wanted to figure out, um, I, I gave you the answer about here's what you need to change when you change this background color. Well, if you need to figure out other styling. Uh, in your project, you're going to have to do a little bit of detective work like this. So I'm going to go to the browser. I'm going to pop up the, the pop up right there. Uh, and with that selector in the elements view, if you if you you might be able to click on the right thing the first time, but usually it, it's it doesn't. It's not the right thing. You know, I'm trying to select that background color, that gold color. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to click right here. And it, it may have properly selected it, you can tell from this area here. So in my case, I've clicked on UI content. And in my case, we see what we, what we did here, uh, line 85 in my CSS file. Now sometimes it doesn't uh, go directly there. So for example, let's say I clicked on the, the heading here. I clicked on the heading, so this shows you clicked on a heading which is inside of this, inside of this, inside of this. So sometimes it's helpful to, to traverse this, this tree of, of elements. If you click here, this is the H2 in question. If I click here, it highlights the larger piece which then shows you there's a definition over here in the jQuery mobile file, there's the custom code that I wrote. If you go back up further, well, that's the whole div to make the whole pop-up happen, and you see things about it, about its sizes and all of that. And then you go back, that's your PG options. Um, here's a section with an ID of PG options. So I, I could have a way to start to change the, uh, the colors of things on a deeper level if I go backwards through that tree of, um, 
of elements. And sometimes it's not so straightforward because here I think, okay, I'm going to change the background color. I'm going to put red behind everything. It crosses that out because there's something else within the, the tree of CSS, the cascade, that gets in the way. So this is why CSS, in the grand scheme of it, remember I said HTML is the easy one. CSS is a little harder. JavaScript is the hardest. So when you get to some of this about trying to reverse engineer an existent framework of CSS, sometimes you have to really poke around in here to figure out, well, what element am I, am I supposed to be targeting? So here I see UI header space UI title. This is ultimately responsible for the title of pop-ups, UI title, UI header. And I can play around with making changes there. So that's only making a change to uh, the side, uh, to to the text area, not the whole, uh, not that whole row. Well, back up a little further within this tree. Well, I was inside of H1 UI title. Backing up a little bit, that whole header has has a um, has a property. So header dot class UI header dot UI bar dash inherit. That's why something like theme roller is there. You drag and drop the colors that you need. You load up the style sheet, but then sometimes you need to go in and uh, make these fine tune changes. And you can do it with the with the uh, F12, the developer tools in in Chrome. take our first break and then we'll talk about um, changing fonts. We've been looking at these boring old fonts for the whole uh, nearly three months now. I want to go in and add some cool fonts. So we'll address uh, royalty free fonts and then how to add uh, some cool fonts to our project. It's about 7.10. Let's take a break until 7.20 and then we'll go on.